All right, guys, here we are with exercise three, coping with large demands for plant air. Um, just as a rehash of what's going on here, we have one large uh, pressure vessel, air compressor tank down here. We have two separate compressors that are both filling the same tank. This percentage is how much air is getting out, how much air is being used out of this tank throughout the facility. Um, and as the pressure drops down because, pressure, because air is being used in the facility, um, currently we have one compressor kick on and pump it all the way back up to 120 psi inside the tank then after it leaks back down the next time 20 psi down which is this span psi here down to 100 the other compressor kicks on that's what we did and it flip flops them back and forth so they take turns so one compressor isn't running all the time and the oil getting used up and heated and everything it has more time to cool down and has a break and you have uh, equal run hours, run time hours, and uh, equal wear on the compressors between the two of them. That was what exercise two was. Exercise three, um, they have you adjust the flow percentage uh, going out of the tank. So if you have a heavy usage in your facility, lots of people are using compressed air, one compressor pumping into this tank at a time might not be enough to keep up with the usage. This compressor might not be able to make enough, might not be able to make more air than is being taken out of the tank at any given time. So to determine if that's the case, they have you set up this second pressure switch and the span they have on this one is 22, which means this one has to drop down to 98 PSI. So when you drop down to 100, one compressor is gonna kick on. If that one compressor kicks on and you're still, still losing air and it keeps dropping down two more PSI down to 98, meaning the one compressor is not keeping up with the amount of air that's being used, it'll kick on the second compressor. So the way that you determine if that's happening or not is this second switch. I'm kind of paraphrasing the instructions here. Um, and they also say that when you first turn it on and the tank's empty, both compressors should come on, um, which is true because you'd be under 98%, right? So this one would be calling for air and this second one would say you're also under 98%, so the one's not keeping up. And also it helps you uh, fill the tank up a lot faster because both of these are putting air into it at the same time. So I believe I have to reset my simulation for that to happen. Uh, still shows I have 93 PSI. Um, either way, you'll see it because it's at 93. So when I start it now, it's below 98. So they'll both come on. Um, this is my exercise two. The same program, I just rearranged some of the rungs. I dragged some of the rungs up and down and rearranged them, put some uh, rung comments in there to explain what's going on. So again, Here's my output lights, my run light, my C1 light, my C2 light. I'm also using my run light um, to, as my enable bit for my stop start circuit. Then here is my flip flop section. So I'm making this bit flip flop in between uh, when the compressor comes on and off based off this pressure switch. So that's what this bit alternating is what makes it switch between the two compressors and because it's tied to this bit here. So here's my output for motor one, my output for motor two that alternating bit is either gonna be here or here. Um, so every time that your pressure switch makes over here saying that you're at 100 PSI and you need to turn on the compressor, um, you're only, only one side of these two rungs, only one of these two rungs, the input side is gonna be true the whole way through and enable the output. So it's either gonna be on this one or this one because this is the uh, normally closed and this is the normally open. Again, that's not the terminology Alan Bradley uses. They use XIC and XIO, um, but they're both tied to this memory location, which is gonna be a one or a zero. So one or the other of these is going to be enabled when the pressure, if your run light's on and it's calling for pressure out of PE1. So what we need to add in here is another rung. How many rungs do I need here? One, I think I only need to add one rung for this input pressure switch. Um, and what do I need it to be? I think it needs to be this guy. I'll tie that to this pressure switch. So in the description here on the right, they have you set it at 120 for the high and 22 for the span. So when it gets up to 120, both of these are gonna shut off. Um, and this one again is only gonna come on, it's gonna come on at 100, because that's 20 below 120. This one's gonna come on at 98. So this one is only gonna, is only going to, uh, we're only gonna use this one if keeps dropping after the single compressor comes on. And that's gonna happen by us varying the amount of flow that's being taken out of the tank. Uh, over here, I'm gonna put a B3 memory location. What are we on now? 
303, I think we are. Um, let's go here and I'll go to this guy. So that's D30, um, three. So let's see, when this, this switch makes, which means it's down to 98 PSI, it will make this bit a one or turn this output to true. And when that happens, I want it to bypass these alternating, this alternating bit here that tells it to have one or the other on. So I'm gonna put a rung around there and a rung around here. About there and this here. So if I put this, tie this output to these locations, whenever we are at 98% or below, let me label this here. Um, I call that the heavy use bit. So when a lot of air is being taken out of this tank and one compressor can't keep up on its own, this will drop down to 98% or uh, 98 PSI, excuse me, which will enable this. Oh, this is actually the pressure switch. I should have labeled, uh, this is PE2. PE2, and this is gonna be the heavy use bit. So when PE2 gets down to 98, it'll go make that it'll, that inside of the input will be true. And this output will go true and be write a one in that um, bit location, that binary D3 number. Return to a one, which will close these contacts here. Um, again, I realize this isn't the proper terminology for Alan Bradley software, but you guys get the idea. So it will bypass the alternating bit. So no matter which one is supposed to be on at that specific time, uh, they will both be made. They'll go around that alternating bit because PE1 will still be calling for error because it'll still be um, under 100 PSI, right? So everything else will be made. Everybody, everything else will be the same, except that it won't be looking at this alternating bit to see which one of the two should be um, activated, which one of these outputs should be on it'll bypass that alternating bit and both of them will be on until this switch goes gets all the way up to 120 PSI, then this will go false. And then when this rung is false, it'll go back to operating normally between these two alternating bits. That's the idea anyway. Let's download it and run it and see if that happens. Nothing's happening now. Okay, so it did reset the simulation. It just, uh, until I downloaded and went to run, it didn't show it. So I'm at zero PSI starting out. Um, I'm gonna turn this flow rate down so that we're not leaking air out of the tank as we're trying to fill it. And when I turn it on, you should see both compressors come on because this heavy use bit, well, it's showing true as already right now. Um, because it's running, I just haven't hit start. So I haven't enabled the program yet, um, but it still has the input from this pressure switch. So let's run this, put it in start. We'll see the run light come on and C1 and C2 lights come on and both compressors are running because this is below 98. This is below 100. That's made the heavy use bit D303 is true, which is bypassing the alternating bit that we were using in exercise two and making both motors run. So once we get up to 120, this bit should drop out and both of these should go false. So nothing should be running then. And also we should see this alternating bit go true because that switches every time when the compressors turn off. So it feels significantly faster if your output flow percentage is at zero and both compressors are running. Um, you don't have to sit here and wait as long as you probably have had to do in the previous examples. We're almost to 120. There we go. Everything shut off. The alternating bit went true, which is what we wanted. And you'll notice when I have the output flow percentage at zero, it just stays at 120 because that's simulating no usage of air out of this tank. And when we crank it up here, when it's at 
one compressor is enough to keep up with it. So I will crank it up a little bit so it flows out faster and then I will turn it back down to 50 when it gets closer to 100. To show you that just the one can keep up. So when this drops down to 100, this will this switch will activate and you'll turn on just one compressor. And you see just one compressor is making the pressure go up in the tank. If we up, upgrade the usage here, now it's going up a lot slower. We get to a certain point where the pressure is not going to go up in the tank anymore because we're using it faster than it's filling the tank. So now the number is dropping. So even though one compressor is running, it's not pumping air into the tank as fast as the air is coming out due to usage. So when this gets down to 98%, this switch will make, or 98 PSI, this switch will make, and it'll trigger the heavy use bit, and it'll go around both of these alternating bits. Basically, this one's already on, but instead of going through this bit here, it'll bypass it and go through this heavy use. And the other one will make this rung, this um, sub rung, I guess I could say, this will go through and bypass that alternating bit, which isn't being made anyway. So both motors will come on when this drops down to 98.0, because this pressure switch will make. There you go, there's our heavy use. Now we're bypassing those alternating bits and you see both, because we detected that we have heavy use in the plant and one compressor is not enough to keep up with it. So once we go back up to 120, they'll both switch off. And if you remember, motor two was the one that was running when we were in single mode and it should uh, work exactly the same where this time motor one will come on when it drops down. We'll just wait for this to get down to 100. Motor one should come on and motor one should be enough to handle it if we only have 68% um, flow out of the tank. It shouldn't keep dropping. There we go. So it's still alternating back and forth except in the case where your use exceeds what one compressor can handle, which I'll simulate again here. So 82 is just enough that it's dropping down, 82% usage. Um, if I go up some, it'll drop faster. When this gets down to 98.0, again, the switch will go on, heavy use, it'll bypass those alternating bits. Both motors will run. We'll see that happen here in a second. And I'm not covering every single detail of the instructions for this exercise. You'll have to read through and see exactly what they have you do. But they have you go to specific um, output flow rates and note what's happening. Um, there you go. So we got to 98. Now they both kicked on. And if you see both lights on, it'll go up to 120. And then it'll flip. When they both shut off, it'll flip our alternating bit. So then the next time, motor two will come on by itself again. Until it drops to 98, then they'll both come on again, based on if the flow is, output flow is enough to make it drop to 98. Um, yeah, again, I'm not covering every single detail in here because I don't want these videos to be super long. I just want you to get the basic idea, and then you can go through all of the detailed information yourselves. Um, but that is essentially what's going on. So we only needed to add one rung and then just put a rung around these alternating bits. So that was a pretty, pretty simple improvement in this case. C2's running until we get down to 98. The second one will come on. 98.0. This switch will make. And that's that. That's how you set it up to account for light usage, where it just switches back and forth, or heavy usage, where one compressor can't keep up with the usage level of the plant.